Hello and welcome to a measurement video on the perimeter of composite figures. Composite figures are figures that are made up of different shapes put together. So to find the total perimeter of composite figures, we number one find the length of each part and then we add up all the lengths together. So in this figure here, where this is a composite figure made up of a half circle and a rectangle, and we at first take notice of the markings that we have. We have two markings on the top line, and we have two markings on the base. We have a single marking on the left-hand side, and a single marking on the right-hand side. So, when we've got a single marking or a double marking, we can trust those lengths. In other words, See how the top line has two markings and the base line has two markings? Well, we can trust that they are the same length as each other. So if there's 8 centimetres on the top line, that means there'll be 8 centimetres down the bottom there. And seeing the left-hand side has a marking as a single marking and the right-hand side has a single marking, we can trust that this side will also be 6 centimetres. Now the left hand side is 6 and the right hand side is 6. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn that right hand side 6 that I just discovered and I'm going to turn it into a black length here and I'm going to put a bracket around it just to remind me of something and that is that the perimeter of a shape uh, needs us to add up all the outside edges and that 6 down here, that dotted line isn't an outside edge. So I'm just putting it in black to remind me uh, not to add that up at the end along with the other edges. Okay. Now one of our edges is that red edge there and that's that half circle. It's, uh, it's called an arc. So we'll need to find that arc length to add together in the end with our 8, our 6 and our other 8. So we need to know the distance around that half circle there, that arc length. Now thankfully we have a formula for that. We saw it in a previous video. And so our arc length is theta over 360. And that, that theta is the angle that's going to be at the center of our arc. Uh, multiplied by 2 times pi times the radius of that arc. So we'll talk about each part there. This pi over 3, uh, sorry, this theta over 360, this represents the fraction of a full circle that we have and you'll recognize 2 times pi times r as the circumference formula. So, let's have a look at the details that we can fill in here. Now, that angle here that I've marked in blue, this angle, can you see how it's a straight angle? And a straight angle is 180 degrees. So there's 180 degrees in that angle around here that's making up the arc that goes around here. So that 180 degrees, that angle size, needs to go in where the theta is. That, that uh, theta is an angle type symbol. So we're going to put 180 degrees in instead of that theta into our formula. So we'll have 180 degrees over 360 degrees. So that's part of our formula filled in. And the other thing in our formula is that we have our R which stands for radius. Now that's the radius of the arc. Okay, let's have a look how we find that. So the radius of that arc, now that radi a radius only goes from the center to the edge. So we're only finding that bottom half of that bit there. All right, so we can see that that radius is going to be the 6, which is the full length, all the way down, divided by 2, because we only want half of that. We only want the radius to put into our formula. So that's, that radius is going to be 3. So we've got a 3 there for our radius of our arc, and that's going to be that 3 is going to be put in there where the R is in our formula. So we've taken the angle and the radius from that arc bit and filled in our formula there. Okay, now it's a job for our calculator. We'll type all that in, 180 over 360 in our fraction button, multiplied by 2 times pi, times 3. Remember there's little multiply signs between the 2 and the pi and the pi and the 3 so we'll do multiplication all the way through there 
and we'll get an arc length of 9.4 if we round it off to one decimal place. So that arc length is just a bit around this half circle, around the edge of the half circle. Now because it's on the edge of our figure, we'll need that as part of our perimeter. Okay, so we've found an arc length of 9.4, so we'll get rid of all our working there, and we've got our 9.4 placed there, and we'll add up all the red bits now, our 9.4 from our arc length, and our 8, and our 6, and our other 8. We won't count this uh, 6 here, because that's on the inside of the shape there. We only want the distance around the edges of our shape. So we have 8 plus 6 plus 8 plus that 9.4 we calculated for our arc length and we've added all the lengths together. Our final perimeter for this composite figure, our final perimeter is 31.4 centimeters. So a bit of an involved process, no, no, no problem with adding all the straight bits but finding that arc length was, uh, was a challenge and we add that result to our other straight bits to get the total perimeter there. Here's another example here. Now once again we have a lot of markings that are the same there and every side with a single marking on it, well that will be 8 meters long. The 8 meter side up the top here has uh, across the top we have 8 meters and a single marking. Every other time you see a single marking we can trust that that's 8 meters long. So we can put all those 8's in there and away we go. Okay, once again we have to find an arc length, then I've put it in red there. We've got a quarter of the circle here, so we're going to use that, but our arc length formula, that's the arc there, the in red, and we need to find that if we're going to have the perimeter around this whole shape here. There's our arc length formula that we saw in the previous example. Now I wonder what our theta is going to be here. 90 degrees there, we've got a right angle symbol, so we know that's 90 degrees there at the center of our arc. And so that 90 degrees will go in where the theta is. So we'll put 90 up the top there. And what's our radius? Can you see the radius of the arc there? That is going to be there, our 8. And uh, we'll pop that in the where the R spot is in our formula. So we'll have that as our arc length formula. We're just plugging in the numbers from this particular arc here to find that red arc length. On our calculator that'll give us a 12.6 meters length around the red bit of the arc and so we can pop that there just ready to add everything up then. So we're just using the arc length formula, filling in the numbers from this particular question and getting a result for the red uh, part of the um, composite figure. So can you see that we're going to, for our final perimeter, we're going to add the 12.6 for the arc bit and an 8 and an 8 and an 8 and another 8. Lots of 8s here because we had a square so all those sides are going to be similar. So there's our 12.6. We've got this 8, this 8, this 8 and this 8 making up our four 8s there. Alright, so we're adding all the straight bits to the curved arc length that we found. And the total perimeter there is 44.6 meters. Okay, so the steps there, we uh, just go back to the steps. We'll uh, find the length of each part, even if it's straight. If it's straight, we might be able to find that pretty quickly. If it's an arc length, we'll, we'll use a formula to find that curve bit. And uh, we'll then add all the lengths together to make our final answer a reality for the perimeter of our composite figures. Okay, so we're really joining just the idea of perimeter and the idea of arc length together in those examples. Hope that helps, and we'll see you next time for some more measurement videos. And if you ever need some maths help and some skills for the future, peterblakemaths.com is a great website with lots of links to heaps of videos to help you. Thanks for that. We'll catch you in the next video. See you then. Bye.